Hey guys, it's Mrs. Montague here, and this video is going to give you an overview of how to use Google Meet. So Google Meet can be used as an alternative to Zoom. Uh, I know that some of you have been having issues with students joining your Zoom meetings, um, and Zoom has some security issues that the county is concerned about. So this Google Meet option is a little bit more secure and actually a little bit uh, easier potentially for students to use than Zoom might be. It's also easier for you to get started, I think, than Zoom is. Um, it's a very, very basic tool, but there are some things that I want you to know about as far as workarounds for some issues that we found during testing this tool. So I am going to just give you an overview of this home page for Meet and that is meet.google.com. So if you wanna to get to your meetings, it's meet.google.com. You can see it in my URL up here. So this first little lightning bolt um, is going to be for any troubleshooting that you might have to do. So if you click on that, it's gonna open this new page uh, where you will be able to troubleshoot um, the meeting quality that you might be having with your Google Meet meeting. Um, so if your video looks fuzzy or your audio isn't quite working right, you might want to click on that little lightning bolt looking thing and look at the troubleshooting guide provided by Google. Um, the other option up here is your settings gear and it's very basic settings. As you can see, it's gonna give you your audio and your video settings. So those are the only two things that you can look at in here. Um, very, very basic settings menu. And then this last is an option for you to send feedback to Google um, about Google Hangouts. So if you're having an issue and the troubleshooting guide hasn't helped you resolve that issue, you might want to send some feedback to Google um, to either share your ideas or um, maybe report any issues that you might be having. So I'm going to cancel out of that. And I'm going to jump right into showing you guys how to create a meeting, which is as easy as clicking on this little plus button to either join or. So you can see the first thing it's asking me to do is to enter a nickname um, or enter a meeting code. So each Google uh, Meet meeting has a meeting code assigned to it. So if somebody's joining a meeting, they would need that meeting code in order to join. So I'm just going to start by typing in test meeting right here. And then when I click continue, it's gonna automatically launch this meeting. So the first thing that it's doing is make sure that my microphone and my webcam are working before I start the meeting. So that's what this little box here is all about. Um, my hamburger over here on the bottom is <clears throat> gonna let me turn on captions from here, check my settings or report a problem and get help if I need to. Um, but it looks like everything's working great for me, so I'm gonna click join now to join the meeting. So the first thing it gives me here is the information about my meeting, which is test meeting, and it also gives me the information to join the meeting. So if I wanted to send this meeting out to my students to use, I could just copy that joining info and paste it in an email or put it in my Google Classroom for students to access. Now, unlike Zoom, there's no setting in here for you to be able to uh, prevent students from joining the meeting before you have started the meeting. So if you send this out a day beforehand, students can click on it and join the meeting a day before, and they'll be able to um, access that meeting at any point, whether you're there or not. So if you want to prevent that from happening, I would suggest that you just notify your students ahead of time that there will be a meeting, but you don't actually send out this meeting information to them until about five minutes before you're ready to start meeting. That way uh, you won't have to worry about uh, joining the meeting and doing anything that you don't know about uh, beforehand. So you can also add people to your meeting straight from here. So if I click on that, it's going to open this uh, spot where I can start typing in email addresses. So as usual, let's just use my husband as an example. I start typing his email address and he comes right up as a person that I can invite to the meeting. So when I click on his name, you can see he's been added up here will be uh, sent to ask him to join the meeting if I choose to click send invite, which I'm not going to do at this point in time. So those are the basics of getting people invited to your meeting. 
Um, once we are in our meeting, you can see there's a couple different things here that you have the option to do. So down here, it tells me on the left hand side that this is my test meeting. If I click on the little up arrow, it will give me that meeting uh, detail so I can still copy that there. And it also gives me the option to add attachments. So attachments are going to be linked to my Google Calendar um, because you can schedule meetings with this Google Meet via Google Calendar, which I'll show you how to do here in just a moment. Um, but you can add attachments there. So if you had like a meeting agenda or maybe a document or something that you wanted to share out with everyone for the meeting, you can add some attachments that they'll be able to see when they join that meeting. Um, over is your audio. If I click on the little microphone button, it will turn my audio off for the meeting. If I click on it again, it will turn it back on. This middle button with the red uh, phone is to end this meeting call. And then this button right here is to turn my camera on and off. So if I click that, it's going to turn this big center camera off uh, and you won't be able to actually see my webcam within the meeting anymore. So this option here is to turn on cap this caption option so I just clicked to turn it on and you can see that now everything I'm saying is appearing as a caption here on the bottom of the screen. This is a great option if you have any students who are maybe better at learning through reading information than they are at listening to information. Um, any EC students might find this tool very useful but I will say that the captions are not going to record um, as part of your if you choose to record your meetings, which I do highly suggest you do. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the captions off right now. And I'm going to skip over this present now just for a second. So you can see this hamburger over here on the bottom right hand side and what options you get when I click on that hamburger. So you can see the first option here is to record the meeting, which I just mentioned. So your captions won't be recorded, but everything else about the meeting will be recorded. So if I click on that record meeting, it's going to ask for consent. Um, and you will probably want to tell your students that you're going to be recording the meeting before you start recording, just so everyone's aware of what's going on and that um, they just know that it's happening. So I'm going to click accept since I'm the only one in here. And then you'll see right above my face over here on the left side at the top, we have now this recording button, which shows me that this Google Meet is being recorded. Once you stop recording, um, and it will take it a few minutes to process, but Google Meet will send you that recording in an email. So that makes it very easy for you to access your recordings later. Um, you can save that recording. You can put it in your Google Classroom. Uh, you can email it out to students. Um, whatever you need to do to disperse that recording, it just makes it really, really easy to access when they send you the recording to your email straight after you're done. So I'm actually going to go ahead back over to my camcorder or my hamburger here and click stop recording because I don't need to be recording this whole meeting. And it's going to just ask me to confirm and it will be saved into my Google Drive, you can see here. Um, and again, it will also be emailed to me. So I'm going to click stop recording. We're good to go there. Your additional options over here, you can change the layout. So in here, you can see they've got this auto layout whatever it does automatically. Um, the other options in your change layout are to have a sidebar. Um, so there's nobody else in the meeting with me, so it's a little bit hard to see. But over on this right-hand side, you'd have all of the um, meeting attendees listed out with their webcams showing if all of their webcams were turned on. So that's what that sidebar view is going to show you. Um, and you can kind of see look like based on the little uh, info um, graphic that it gives you right there in the selection. So the spotlight is just going to show whoever's speaking will have their um, face and their webcam, whatever it is they're presenting potentially up as the main screen of the Hangout. You won't be able to see anything else in the background. This tiled option, again, will just tile out the different webcams or the different people are presenting with the tile view. 
So um, I personally really like this sidebar because whoever's talking will have their face or whatever material they're presenting big in the middle of the screen. And then you'll still be able to see everyone else off on that side panel. And that will be important as well when I get into the presenting information via Google Meet, which I'll get to in just a moment. Um, but to go through the rest of these little options here on the side, I also go full screen with Google Meet, so the um, top panel and then the side or the bottom bar on my Chromebook would then disappear, so you could uh, see the full screen of Google Hangout instead. You can turn captions on from here. If you click on your settings, that's again just going to take you to your audio and your video settings. Um, same things that you had on the home page. You can also choose to dial in with audio with your phone instead of that's an option if you need it. You can also report a problem or get help from here if you need to. All right, last thing here, I'm going to show you this present now option. So you can either present your entire screen or you can present one window. Um, I prefer presenting my entire screen because it just makes it easier to switch between um, tabs or switch between apps that I might be wanting to present. So for instance, if you had a slideshow and then Google Doc or something, um, that presenting your entire screen would be a great option. So I'm actually going to click on that now, and you'll see it gives me this uh, box in the middle and asks me if I want to share the contents of my screen. So you click on the screen that it's showing you and say, basically, this is what I want to share, and you can see that this share option has been highlighted now. So when I click share, Whoop, I went to full screen. It's going to show me that I'm now presenting my screen. So one thing that Miss Brown pointed out when we were testing this is that she wanted to be able to see what she was presenting and what uh, was happening in the Google Hangout at the same time, which um, isn't really a built-in option that you can do with this tool, but we found a workaround that I'm going to show you now. So I'm actually going to open a new tab right here. So if you were in this meeting with me right now, you would be seeing this uh, Google tab with my space background because that's the tab that I'm clicked on and I am presenting my screen. So this is what everyone would be seeing. But you notice now I can't see my Google meeting anymore. So to get around that, what I would suggest doing is clicking on your new tab. So you can see I've got my meet tab right here. I've got my calendar tab right here. And I have my new tab I just made right here. So I'm going to click on the new tab and I'm going to pull it out of this window. So you see now it has become its own little window over here once I've pulled it down out of the main section. OK, when I let go of it, that's going to go full screen. So I'm going to click this button that looks like a little double window at the top uh, right corner next to the X button and choose to minimize this just a little bit. So it's going to still show it to me, but it's smaller than the window behind it. So now you can see uh, my calendar behind, which is my background window, and then my new tab here is in the foreground. So I'm actually going to drag this one over all the way to the left, so it's aligned to the left there. And then I'll click back here and click on my meeting. So if I had more than one person in this meeting with me, you could see all of their webcams showing here on the right hand side because I've got the sidebar view going. And then if I go down here and hover over my Google Chrome, you can see that I've got a my meeting window here. And I've also got my new tab that I've created. And I've actually got a couple of them open because uh, I've been working on some things today. So I'm going to click on my new tab. And now you can see that I can still see my Google Meet happening in the background. But I also have my other tab showing in the foreground. So I could pull up a presentation here in my tab that's in the foreground, this one that's showing space on the background currently and be going through that while also still keeping an eye on what's happening in the Google meeting behind that. So that's kind of a workaround. So you can still view your Google meeting while you've got another tab pulled up and are showing other information. So let me go ahead and exit out of this tab. We don't need it right now. Um, 
But that's an overview of presenting. And once you want to stop, you can see you've got that really quick option to just um, and I don't know why it's happening, but every time I stop presenting on here in my Google Meet, it is also stopping my screencast. So that's why I've got a weird little um, break in the middle of that video. So um, that's something interesting to note, but you shouldn't have to be doing a screencast while you've got a Meet going anyway. Um, I'm just doing it for this instructional video so you guys can see what's going on. <clears throat> so, but that is your basic overview to presenting with Google Meet. Now up here at the top, you can see that they've got the little person count in here. That's your participants list. And of course, I'm the only person in this meeting right at the moment. Um, we also have this little uh, box that looks like a speech bubble with text in it. If I click on that, that's going to open the chat, which you can see as well. I can switch between the list and the chat as well. Under the people list, you can see I've got that easy option to add more people to the meeting if I need to. And lastly, it just shows you your little icon here. Um, and you can just see that you're there and you're the one talking, I guess. So uh, that's basically it as far as the Google Meet goes. Again, very easy to set up um, and very easy to actually function um, and work with if you're either a teacher or a student. So. Last thing I'm going to show you before I end this video is the um, Cherokee County uh, calendar that I've got pulled up. So this is my Cherokee County Schools calendar. And let's say I want to schedule a Google Meet for the future. So next week oops, is Monday the 30th. So let's say I want to do a new uh, Google Meet here. So I'm going to say this is my Google Meet for Monday, and I'm going to click more options right here so I can see what's going on with this meeting. And let's move my face over so you guys can see as well. All right, so it's going to be on March 30th. I don't want to do it all day. Let's say it'll be 10 to 1030. That works for me. <clears throat> um, so to make it a Google Meet, all you need to do here is to add your conferencing and make this a Hangouts Meet. So now you can see it's got the Join Hangouts Meet drop down here. And you can join by that link. You can also have it join with a phone number uh, if you need to do that. But we should be fine with just the Meet. Everyone should have this capability um, built into their Chromebooks. It should be turned on for students at this point and ready to use. So just like any other under um, event, I can get a notification, I can set myself to busy, I can add a description if I want. All right, so you can see here I can also add an attachment from here. So that would be automatically tied to my Google Meet here. It's as easy as that. So again, if you've got a document or a slideshow or a meeting agenda or anything like that, you can just simply attach it right there. It's going to show you that you can uh, upload from your drive, or you can upload from your device if you've got a file locally that you want to upload and attach to that meeting. So if I say that this is going to happen on March 30th from 10 to 10.30, um, I can also add my here, and it's the same as any other Google thing. You just start typing in the person's name that you want to invite, and it will send them that invitation to come and join your event. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually take him out and just click save. So you can see now at 10 a.m. on my calendar, I have a, a Google Meet coming up on Monday the 30th. So I can click in there and click to join my Google Hangouts Meet. And it's giving me the option to copy the conference link to my clipboard. Um, and then I can go put that in Google Classroom or send it out via email, however you think it would work best for you. Um, so that's how you schedule a future meeting. But again, you probably don't want to send that link out until you're ready to start the meeting, just so you don't have students like joining beforehand. Um, so you can make sure that everyone's coming at the in there to be monitoring. So uh, that is really it as far as Google Meets go. I am going to go ahead and leave this Google meeting and you can see I can either return to the home screen here or I can rejoin the meeting if I accidentally ended it by accident. So 
if you've got any questions on how to use Google Meets or how to get started, um, I'm a great resource. I can help you. Miss Amy Brown has also been uh, exploring how to and has been doing test calls today with me and Miss Cabe. So Miss Sonia Cabe could also be a great resource to ask about how to use Google Meets. So again, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask any three of us that I just mentioned, um, and we would be happy to help. So hopefully this helps you moving forward. Again, um, any questions, we would be very happy to assist. All the best.